and surrounding areas. Welcome to Mogul Life TV. This is Charity Smith, Ms. Mogul. I'm the host of Mogul Life TV. Today it is my esteemed pleasure to launch our Christmas season and I have the distinct pleasure this morning of hosting none other than Teresa Petula. Pesula. Pesula, pardon me, <laughs> who is the managing director of HoustonTheaters.com. Let me tell you Houston, you need to get connected with this lady. Without further ado, Teresa, thank you so much for uh, hosting me in the iconic uh, Houston Ensemble Theater this afternoon. So thank you so much for that. Yes, we are in the Ensemble Theater on Main Street in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I um, publish HoustonTheater.com mm -hmm. online. And um, I've lived in Houston for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And since I started HoustonTheater.com in 1997, um, the Houston Theater District has been here already. We have the Houston Grand Opera mm -hmm. at the Wortham Center, the mm -hmm. Houston Ballet, mm -hmm. the Houston Symphony Orchestra, the Alley Theater. Absolutely. And um, we have a rich cultural experience just within the theater district. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. So tell us a little bit about how you've seen the arts landscape expand. Over 30 years, you've seen the transitions, you've seen Houston grow. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, now, the theater scene is not just limited to the theater district, which is downtown. Right. The theater scene um, also is outskirts of the theater district, mm -hmm. which is the ensemble theater, mm -hmm. which is right on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We have um, the bus route here. It's really easy to get to. Absolutely. And um, the ensemble theater is great, getting prepared for a Christmas show mm -hmm. called A Soulful Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it's directed by Patro Harris, who I'm, whom I've interviewed a few times. Um, and it's a brilliant, brilliant uh, musical. And um, they have Michael Jackson, they have all kinds of songs that's gonna be um, featured on there. And it's really um, something that I think a lot of people should see, but so don't So it's a show for the generations. Absolutely. 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 So tell me a little bit about going back to uh, the Houston scene. Tell us about what we can expect during the holidays. Houston has a very diverse cultural expression, particularly during the holidays. So tell us a little bit about um, what we can expect to see when it comes to cultural diversity in the city of Houston during the Christmas season. Okay. Um, the Houston Grand Opera is preparing for a big production of The Little Prince based on the beloved children's book that I loved since I was a little kid. I was watching it. Um, I also, uh, the Houston Ballet, of course, has the Nutcracker, Absolutely. which is a time-honored tradition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, the... Houston Ballet, uh, we also have the Ensemble Theater. Mm -hmm. The Stages ha uh, repertory production ha also has uh, a good Christmas play called uh, Sisters and Catechism. The Alley Theater mm -hmm. has a Charles Dickens classic. One of my favorites, by the way. Yes. A time-honored tradition in the family and in the city of Houston. And going back to the theater district, mm -hmm. um, Theater Under the Stars, which yes. in short we call Tuts. Tuts, yes. <laughs> has a Christmas musical mm -hmm. based on the movie from 1983 called A Christmas Story. Mm -hmm. uh, a Christmas Story is about little Ralphie and he always wanted a BB gun for his uh, Christmas gift and his parents told him that no, you can't have it because um, they're gonna shoot your eye out. Oh, wow. shoot your eye out. Right. So I uh, just wanted to promote that because that is going to be a huge music. They turned it into a big musical from the movie. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's going to be a, a good show to see. Um, more than two million people visit the Houston Theater District annually. Absolutely. And um, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but the Houston Grand Opera, which is going to have the Little Prince, mm -hmm. um, is the only opera company in the U.S. to win a Grammy, a Tony, and an Emmy. And that's right here in the city of Houston. That's right. So, Houston, we really need to connect more with the vibrant culture that's happening in our arts community. Now, tell us a little bit before we go, what can we expect from Houston theaters.com. It's a wonderful resource to find out what's happening around the city of Houston. Tell me, who are some of the newsmakers you've seen around and about the city of Houston? Well, when you go to the plays and mm -hmm. the musicals that they offer here in Houston, mm -hmm. just like all the theaters that we mentioned, sometimes the playwrights attend it, and that is a big, huge social scene where people can actually talk to the people that wrote the plays. So that's something that I write about at HoustonTheater.com. 
Um, I also, um, it's something to where you can actually meet people. If you're single or if you're just wanting to meet people within the community, mm -hmm. it's something to, um, Eileen Morris over here, who is the artistic director of the Ensemble mm -hmm. Theater, she has a party for every premiere. Oh, wow. she, yeah, the, before the party, at intermission, she serves cakes mm -hmm. and beautiful silverware, and she just, and she serves wine and um, tea, and, and it's just, you know, she has a party, because every play and every musical that we go to, that mm -hmm. I go to personally, is a party. Absolutely. Because where people get together and, and they listen to music and they hear people sing, you can even dance in the <laughs> aisles, and, but it's just something that I think the whole community can share together. Now, that brings us to the lifestyle component we want to talk about. How does the Houston Arts District really enhance the lifestyle experience? We have folks who are relocating here to Houston from all around the country and the world. We are a global metropolitan city. So how have you seen the Houston arts scene welcome our visitors and bring them into our lifestyle? Right. Um, one thing that we can do is go, start going to the plays, mm -hmm. start going to the musicals. A lot of the times when the actors, who are Houstonians as well, um, get on stage, they bear their souls to the entire community. Uh, when they go on stage and they perform and they, um, they bear their souls. And so at, at the end of every, uh, some plays, the theater itself, for instance, Alley Theater or the Ensemble Theater, will schedule a talk back. Oh, where wonderful. the actors mm -hmm. can actually tell you about their experience or their expressions mm -hmm. of what they did on stage. So that's one way to not only meet the actors, talk to the directors about the process of the entire uh, production, and um, that's just one way to be able to communicate and, and see the expression of what they did creatively for, for the Houston community. And so Houston, with all of that being said, attending events here in the Houston uh, landscape, the arts landscape, it's not just only uh, mixing and mingling with the stars and with the actors, etc., but we really do bear our souls. We're known as a community and a family. As large as Houston is, it really does have a small town feel because we tend to know each other and, and it's easy to connect. So I invite you, Houston, get connected with what's happening in our Houston arts landscape. The Holidays are a wonderful time to do that. So I'll see you somewhere decking the halls. Have a wonderful time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the iconic Ensemble Theater here in the great city of Houston, Texas. My name is Charity Smith. I am Ms. Mogul, the host of Mogul Live TV. It is my esteemed pleasure to be in the iconic Ensemble Theater with none other than Ms. Eileen Morris. She is the executive director of the uh, theater here. And let me tell you, Houston, we are in store for a wonderful holiday season here in the Ensemble Theater. Without further ado, will you help me welcome Ms. Eileen Morris. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Ms. Charity. I appreciate that. No, the pleasure Hello, Houston. Mine. How you all doing? Absolutely. I wanted to talk to you, Ms. Morris, about what's going on here in the iconic uh, Ensemble Theater. But before we get to that, tell us about your history with the theater. When did you start? How have you seen it grow? Tell us a little bit about oh, that. Oh, my goodness. Well, first of all, we're really blessed, the Ensemble Theater, yeah. is to be able to be here in the heart of Midtown. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ensemble Theater is 39 years old. We're the wow. oldest African-American professional theater in the Southwest, and one of a few across the country that owns its own facilities. Wow. So we're really That's very huge. grateful to have this opportunity to be half a block in the middle of the city of Houston. Uh, we started in 1976. Mr. George Hawkins is the founder of the Ensemble Theater. Uh, George was an uh, accountant for Tinnacle Oil Company. Wow. And he had a passion and a dream for, uh, the, for the arts. He was very good and, uh, at uh, doing theater and he wanted to be able to have a place that artists could practice and perfect their craft. And so thus, voila, the Ensemble Theater. So it started out as a touring company. He would tour plays that he had written or adapted mm -hmm. throughout the city of Houston, Antioch Baptist Church. He went to Dallas, went to Europe, and did some of those things. And then he came back and founded a small place, maybe about six blocks down from here, Miss mm -hmm. Charity. Uh, it was a little old pet store. And uh, so he renovated that space, and we started producing theater 
in-house. Mm -hmm. I joined them in 1982 uh, from Illinois, which is my hometown, Chicago. I didn't think I heard the Texas draw. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So I joined them in 1982. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so one of the things that happened when that happened was that I became his managing director. Okay. And so I worked really closely with him in uh, you know, making sure that the administrative aspect of the ensemble theater was strong and was able to be, you know, maintained by the theater. And then in 1985, George had been riding around looking for another space for the ensemble theater because we had outgrown the space that we were in. He found and stumbled upon this space at 3535 Main Street. Absolutely. That's where the ensemble theater is. And when he found it, you know, he fell in love with it. The, the landlords were very accommodating. And so then, um, we came in and we, you know, renovated the space physically ourselves first, just, you know, trying to make sure that we had a space for theater, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then started producing plays. So we had uh, three performing spaces, the main stage, which mm -hmm. is named after George, mm -hmm. the George Hawkins Theater, and then the black box space, which is named after Mrs. Audrey Lawson, okay. who was uh, our board chair emeritus, and she is... Um, also one of the persons that really was a, a leader and spearheader in making sure that we received help to get dollars to mm -hmm. renovate the space Huge when we had a major, that's right, yes. we had major, major renovation. Mm -hmm. So that major renovation happened from 1994 to 1997, mm -hmm. but meanwhile we still kept producing theater. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our founder died in 1990, George Hawkins mm -hmm. did. When that happened, I became the artistic director and worked really closely with the board, with the artists, and continued to make the art happen. Once we got the renovation done, we just kept producing theater, and that's what we've been doing ever since. And the essence of that kind of organic start has always been a part of the theater. When you walk in, you can come from all over the world, and you sense that you're part of a community and a, and a tightly knit family Absolutely. from the streets. That's you right. feel that coming in the that's door. Right. So you've done a fantastic job. Well, this whole and community keeping that. supports us Absolutely. very much. And Georgia's dream is strong and is alive, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that we keep saying. It's not about, you know, any particular artist or any particular work of art, yeah. but it's about buying into this space mm -hmm. as an institution mm -hmm. that is there for the community. And that was his dream and it continues to be our dream of what it is that we want to do. And it has been such a part of the growth of Houston. Absolutely. You know, it's been such a part of what makes Houston so special and so eclectic and so wonderful and so attractive to those folks who are coming in from around the country. I mean, there is a place that rivals, I will say, Broadway absolutely. and anything that you will see in New York, you'll find it here at the Ensemble Theater. That's right. I mean, because, Ms. Charity, the thing is, is that the Ensemble Theater is a producing arts organization. Yes. So we produce six main stage shows a year. So there's a little bit of something for everyone yes. all year round. And you it's can get a so I love that. I mean, absolutely it's general. You can get a musical, you can get a drama, you can get a comedy, you can get something that's for the whole family. Yeah. You can come here all year round <laughs> and you can have a wonderful experience. It's an intimate setting, mm -hmm. but you've got to get to see a sneak peek of what the stage looks like. Mm -hmm. So it's intimate and it's a lot of fun. And you know, you, when you know that you're coming here, you're investing in this institution, which is one mm -hmm. of a few African American theater companies in the country. Mm -hmm. So to look at that and know that this is here in Houston, yeah. where the anchor Arts Institution in uh, in Midtown, so we've been here the longest, mm -hmm. and Midtown has grown so much around Absolutely. us. Absolutely. So when and you look at everything, I mean, there's a, there's a, across the street, you can't see it right now, but across the street, there's a wonderful <laughs> um, parking garage, retail stores, and yeah. apartment buildings that are going to be there. The match is diagonally across mm -hmm. the street from us that houses mm -hmm. about 30 to 40 arts organizations throughout the year. They just opened up in October. Mm -hmm. And then just diverse works, Main Street Theater Company, Children's Theater. There's so many things that are going on in this area and the ensemble theater is kind of in the heart of it Absolutely. with the angry one. And, uh, Midtown, Midtown Management District has a uh, cultural arts and entertainment uh, program. And tell us about your involvement. <coughs> well, I'm on the board of Midtown Management mm -hmm. District. I'm the secretary of the board. Mm -hmm. I'm also the chair of the cultural arts and entertainment district because about uh, 2012, the Midtown received its um, designation, mm -hmm. its cultural arts designation from Texas Commission on the Arts. Tell people how huge that is. I mean, it's like phenomenal because Absolutely. there's not many management districts that Absolutely. have its own cultural arts inst uh, you know, designation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that means that they, they understand the value of what's going on right. here in Midtown. They understand that the arts are hugely important and impact lives daily. Mm -hmm. It's like we always tell 
our young people because we also part of our artistic programming is that we tour. We still tour because Absolutely. of you know the dream that George had. So we tour plays and different uh, special events and that kind of thing. But then we also have a training program for youth ages six to seventeen. Mm -hmm. That's a year round program in uh, theater, dance, music, cultural studies, technical theater, and that's winter break, spring break, and two four week sessions in the summer. But because of those things, we always tell our kids. We're not, or the parents, we're not trying to make an actor or a director or a singer or dancer out of a young, young person, but what we are doing is giving them life skills that they can use for the rest of their life, self-esteem, you know, creativity. And I think that what the arts tend to do for people, it gives them an opportunity to kind of relax mm -hmm. and release. It also provides them with uh, information about who they are as human beings because there's always some kind of connection when you see a piece of art. It's like when you look at a painting, or, you know, when you hear a great song, you know, it, it te does something within your inner soul, your mm -hmm. being. The synergy that happens from a work of art affects our day-to-day -day existence. And I'm glad you brought that up because we talk a lot about um, how this theater has anchored the city of Houston, particularly the Midtown area. But again, we have folks who are relocating from all around the world here. And Absolutely. so many times we need that conversation starter, that get to know you moment. Right. And you have that when you visit places like the Ensemble Theater. It's something about art. It's universal enough so everyone feels included in that. That's right. And, and you can kind of wrap your arms around the person that's next to you and really get to know them. We don't find that in every environment. That's right. But this environment is just kind of conducive to learning more about your neighbor and learning more about what's happening in Houston. And I can't help but as we speak, keep looking at the banner back here that says, follow your dream. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, every year we have a season theme, mm -hmm. and so that season theme is based upon what that collection of plays means mm. to, you know, the Houston community, what yeah. it means to us as artists, what mm -hmm. it means to the ensemble theater. And so this year, each one of the plays that were selected are plays that deal with, with having uh, aspirations having something you know tangible right there in front of you that you're striving to go for. Mm -hmm. And it reminded us of what our founder, George Hawkins, mm -hmm. did when he followed his dream, like you know, Lorraine Hansberry says, or Langston Hughes says mm -hmm. from A Raisin in the Sun, yeah. you know, what happens to a dream deferred, does it drive like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sword and run. You know, so when you think about the dreams mm -hmm. of people, you know, it takes a lot of guts and, and stick to itiveness and you know, uh, 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 something to, to say, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go where I know is the best place for, it's not only me, but for the world to be able to have mm -hmm. an experience. And you, you said something, Charity, Miss Charity, about when, we, when, the, when the audience is all together in the theater. And that's, I, I love that time besides mm -hmm. the rehearsal time. I love rehearsals. I love the process of the journey of mm -hmm. discovery of the art as mm -hmm. it goes along. It's but when those good. audiences are together, yes. and there is no, you know, there is no, you know, they may be a diverse audience, mm -hmm. but you, color is blind. Mm -hmm when gender is blind, when age is blind, because there's a commonality of people that have come together to share an experience. Mm -hmm. And that experience then becomes a universal experience mm -hmm. because you've all had it at the same time, different ways that you, that you relate to it because of your gender, diversity, mm -hmm. age, all of that. Mm -hmm. But the commonality of coming together, and that's what is so valuable about what the support has been for the Ensemble Theater from the city of Houston. We really are a village here. Absolutely. We really are a village yes, here. Yes, ma'am. Take me on a tour <laughs> of the iconic, and I keep saying iconic because, and it's not a word that I'm throwing out lightly. No, There's so, so much that has happened. There's so many faces, newsmakers, who have dotted those doors and put something here, and you just kind of feel the history, the experience, all of those things that are going on, you just kind of feel it in the atmosphere. So I want to dive into that a little bit more. Take a tour with us. We'll be right back. Great. Welcome back. We're now on the tour with the artistic director of the Ensemble Theater, Ms. Eileen Morris. And as we're walking down these historic hallways, I can't help but see the mission statement here. Talk to me about why that is so important and why it's so prominently posted for everyone to see. Well, I think it's important for us to be able to tell our stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we don't tell our stories, who's going to make sure that, that the voices are heard 
of our ancestors, of, you know, if you think about Sankofa mm -hmm. in the African tradition, mm -hmm. uh, being able to, you know, realize your past, to be able to live in your present and mm -hmm. be able to move forth in the future. Mm -hmm. Those are the important, that's an important aspect of who we are as African American mm -hmm. people. But just because we do African American art, and African American theater, that experience is for everyone. And universal? those stories become very universal. Mm -hmm. But we look at it as making sure that our stories are told from mm -hmm. an African American perspective mm -hmm. and that they're there to enrich and engage and entertain a diverse community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what more could you ask for? We're making sure that there's something out there mm -hmm. for everyone. And that's what the Ensemble Theater stands for, where the E is for everyone. Everyone. We really are a part of a village, and I keep going back to that because I'm sensing that as we speak, uh, it's it's kind of transitioning from all of the history into present day. We still have that intimacy, that sense of history, that sense of anchoring, and you get that when you're here at the ensemble. Again, we're speaking from an African American perspective, but it's a perspective that is so wide you can find your place oh, within our love place. It. Yes, ma'am. So <laughs> take the come on, take the journey with us. Let's go. Stage. The main stage. The main stage. Um, I've attended so many events and plays here, and I tell you some of my best memories are probably in this uh, main stage area. I mean, it's just a wonderful time. It's been a, a, um, a family tradition, if you will, where we come and we experience the holidays and culture and all of those wonderful events and many of them and I'm sure many of you can say have happened right here some of the best conversations and the best connections <laughs> have happened right here in these seats if these seats could tell the story if, they, if these seats could if talk. they could talk and we're glad they can but if they could I'm sure we would hear so many treasures and pearls of wisdom and wonderful oh. memories and families connecting and girl I haven't seen you in a long time and hey where have you been? That's All right. of that has happened Ooh, here. You're giving me goosebumps thinking I'm about that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's a wonderful thing. And so to be here now on stage this close to again where all the magic happens is an absolute treat for me. It's a treat for me. So talk to me about what's happening here on stage in Houston. I want to talk to you about a soul for Christmas. And don't be surprised if I break out with this Christmas right over there because I'm a bit of a ham. Well, go ahead on I'm a bit of a ham. I might join you. Come on, what? <laughs> I'm a ham, honey. So give me a stage and a light and I will give you a show. Yes, yes. So talk to me about a soulful Christmas. Come on, let, well, let's. We're really blessed here at yeah. the Ensemble Theater. First of all, thank you so much for those words and for reminding us of why we do what we do. Yeah. Because you know sometimes you get so caught up, mm -hmm. charity, and just you know doing the work and making sure that the art is happening and the people are happy and your artists are happy. You forget why you do it. It's kind of like what the true meaning of Christmas is. It's not about. Uh, you know, presents and you know, all of that. It's about the families coming together, mm -hmm. gathering, enjoying one another, loving up on one another, mm -hmm. feeling so good, and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our souls. Amen. That's, that. that's what Christmas is. Yes. And so the beauty of it is that we, the Ensemble Theater, you becomes, thank you. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, it's the, that's what it is. That's my truth. The Ensemble Theater comes together to uh, with this particular play, Step Stewart's A Soulful Christmas. Mm -hmm. It's a play that um, I had heard about from a friend of mine and 
I got an opportunity to talk to Mr. Stewart about mm -hmm. his play and what it meant. And when I saw little clips, because he's done this play in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and when I saw little clips of it, I go, this is got for it. our audience. Mm -hmm. Because it's songs that, now you know, okay, mm -hmm. you all know too. At Christmas time, what do you do after you eat? You eat, you know, you have fun, you talk, you laugh, you know, you share, you share stories, and then you, the, you know, sometimes you watch football mm -hmm. or whatever sport there is, but always, always there's going to be a family talent show. Somebody going to get up there, me too. You're going to get up there and you're going to be doing your thing. It's either going to be some singing, it's going to yes. be some dancing, you're going to write, recite some poetry. Mm -hmm. You're going to just have fun. Mm -hmm. So when he told me that this play, a Soulful Christmas is all the songs that we grew up listening to. Oh. The Temptations singing Silent Night. The Jackson 5 singing Santa Claus is come Coming on, to Town. Come on, come uh, on. Mahalia Jackson singing Go Tell It on the Mountain. Uh, Boys to Men singing their Christmas song. Donnie Hathaway singing This Christmas. That's it! So when you hear all those songs, you just go, it just brings back a rush of memories. Yeah. And isn't that the beauty the of, of what art is? It's like it brings back a memory, you know, that, that is still up in you mm -hmm. that just comes out because of something that has happened on stage. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. There's, uh, the story is basically about these two young people that whose grand, great-grandparents uh, have, uh, they live with them and they put them to sleep and, they, mm -hmm. and this grandpa has this wonderful watch mm -hmm. and the, you know this, uh, this watch that he has and so he tells them don't mess with this watch go to sleep because mm -hmm. Christmas is the next day well they wake up they rub they the do. watch of, of course, course and when they rub the watch they go back in time and when they go back in time they find out how their grandparents met mm -hmm. They, you know, they sing Baby It's Cold Outside, the, parents, the grandparents, the great grandparents do. And you find, you go through this time frame. So some from the 40s to the 50s to the 60s, 70s, 80s, you get to experience all those, what the wonderful music from that time and share in different parts of the world that have happened and, you know, experiences that have happened for each and every one of us. And while you're talking, what I keep hearing is the importance of tradition. Yeah. The importance of yes. tradition. Sometimes we, we can become so cosmopolitan yes. that we move away from those things that really grounded us as a family. Right. And so as we're hearing those songs, we remember Grandpa singing this and Grandmama That's singing right. this. And let me tell you, there was nothing like Christmas in my house. My grandmother made 7-Up cake, pineapple oh, cake, absolutely. strawberry cake. Absolutely. And we would be humming and singing the carols and All joy the to the world. And, and come on now, talking about what's happened in the family and how God has blessed us to come back to this time. That's that's when right. nothing else outside these doors matter That's right. but your family and we're sharing our history, we're sharing our love of each other, we're sharing our love for the season and for Jesus That's and right. all of those things that happen. So as we're time traveling, you know, one thing I, again I'm hearing is the importance of tradition. That's what locks us together. We can have all the wonderful other experiences and trust me, I'm all for that. Absolutely. But at some point you come home. That's right. And the Ensemble Theater is home for us. Yeah. I mean, we're here for you, for Absolutely. this community. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this time <laughs> with me and with Ms. Eileen Morris. Let me tell you, you are in for a treat. I cannot wait for opening night of A Soulful Christmas. We will be here. Hopefully, we'll have an opportunity to talk to some of the actors. So, Houston and surrounding areas. New York, LA, nothing compares to Houston in the, in the wintertime. Nothing compares to uh, the season and the holidays here in Houston, Texas. But before we go, I want to make sure, Houston, you know how to connect with the Ensemble Theater. Not only do they have a wonderful play bill, but there are programs during the winter break. You know, parents, we're always looking for those opportunities Absolutely. to keep our children engaged and connected, not only in the holiday season, but just keep their minds engaged. So I wanted to hear briefly, uh, Ms. Morris, what can parents do to connect their students and their children to the ensemble during the Christmas well, season? Well, absolutely. We have a, a wonderful winter break program, so it's an opportunity because a lot of times kids are out of school, mm -hmm. but the parents are still working mm -hmm. almost up until the holiday. Mm -hmm. So you can bring them to the ensemble theater. It's an all-day program, and it's six days that we do it. I think it's December 21st to the 23rd, and then the 27th until the 29th, or something like that. But you can check out the website mm -hmm. and find that out and the website is ensemblehouston.com mm -hmm. and the production of Soulful Christmas runs until December 30th so I guarantee you you're in for a treat and you'll go out singing one of those songs that you've loved all your life. Hang all the mistletoe I'm gonna get to know you better this Christmas yes 
I'll see you at the ensemble for Christmas. <laughs> Me too. Keep it real. Y'all 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 keep it real. Keep it real. Well, well, I, try, I try to keep it real best I can <laughs> and do what I can do. Okay. You know, you're presentable. I know you're going to come to my house this evening. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I do have home training, so I'm sorry, Pop. Yeah, it's okay. I just don't get up early for nobody. Okay. <laughs> so this is the best I can give you at this time. And, and we're glad. Yeah, I appreciate it. I got to you know, get my house going on my pajamas. Okay. Uh, I'm getting too much. Okay. Oh, oh, wow. What's in your Pop-Pop going to do this Yeah, you sure? Yeah, I don't think about that. This is how. Yes, sir. In the military. I don't work construction. I don't have my own business. I've been with my wife like 47 years. You know what? That's that. You know, matter of fact, Houston, welcome back to the Ensemble Theater. You have just come into my conversation with Pop Pop, who is the main character of A Soulful Christmas here at yeah. the Ensemble. And trust me, he is a treasure. Uh, he is a delight. And you're going to enjoy him on and off stage. So, Houston, yeah. without further ado, this is Pop Pop, actually known as Mr. Andre Neal. Yeah, Andre Neal. That's right. And he That's right. is the main character in the play. So please welcome him. Thank you for sitting down and yeah, talking well, with me, Pop Pop. Thank you for coming to see me. And thank you for waking up at 2 yeah, o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the best I can. Well, talk to me a little bit about what you've done uh, in theater prior to this point, because you've certainly been in the scene for quite some time. Tell us a little bit about your experiences in the art scene here in Houston. Well, the art scene, I've been in Houston a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did the role of Pop Pop uh, last year, and then I was blessed to come back and do travel. I played Archie Stone in travel. Okay. And uh, Mr. Pedro blessed me to allow me to play this role again as Pop Pop, you know. And, uh, you know, I just only been here a couple of years. But I'm taking Houston by, by storm. You, know? you have taken Houston by storm. And trust sure me, I'm best I can. as he's sitting here, he's actually stealing our hearts as we speak to him. He, you are just such a delight. Talk to me a little bit about Pop Pop. In a Soulful Christmas, we know that it's an adaptation of Step Stewart's play, yes, uh, and it has such a wonderful, iconic feel with the music, with the yeah. theater, uh, and we go through time, we go through generations. Talk to us about what the play is all about and what you bring to the play. Well, you know, uh, it's about our culture. Mm -hmm. It's about our dance. It's mm -hmm. about our music. Mm -hmm. It's about us raising our children uh, to be good men, good women. Mm -hmm you know, and teaching the same morals and values that we instilled in them into their children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard out here right now. You know, it's what, 2015, eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, 2015, you know, I walked outside. Time, and, yeah, these little boys got their pants hanging off their rumps, and, and girls just acting foolish and crazy out there. Yeah, there there's, there's, there's a lack of discipline in the household. And nowadays, if you discipline your child, you're jail. Where did they get that from? Where I come from, your mom and daddy got on your butt when you did something wrong. It made you do better. I ain't saying abuse nobody. But this play will show you exactly how children should be treated by their loved ones, especially the elders, mm -hmm. and, and the love of the, uh, of the children that we get. So when you teach, you know, if you treat them right, you can teach them right. Now that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. And we talked, to, and we spoke a little bit to the director about what it means to be a village, to raise our children yeah. in the morals and the culture and the codes of ethics mm -hmm. that we had. And we raised those children with those codes of ethics. In some kind of way, we kind of moved away from that. Talk to us a little bit about why it's important that families come to see this play, particularly the generations. We don't just want moms and dads, mm -hmm. but grandmoms, granddads, aunts and uncles. Why is it important that we come as a family to see this play? The reason you should come as a family to see this play, and I want you to hear me real good, yes, young sir, lady, I'm listening. because you get to see a family love each other. You get to see a family go to church together, pray together. You get to hear the kids talk about what their grandparents taught them. And it just shows you that when you uh, have a tight unit as a family, kids grow up to be right. Kids grow up to have great morals, values, more education, want to do better, and instill the same morals and values in their children, like I said earlier. You know, nowadays you got the, you got what, you got the cell phone, you got the computer, yes, the laptop, yes, the iPad. You go in somebody's house right now and everybody doing something other than talking. One girl, the young girl will be on the phone, the young man will be on his, his video game. The daddy playing video games in his own room because he don't want to play the same game his son playing. And the wife probably handling something in the kitchen, but she on her phone talking to her girlfriend. It's just a lack of communication in the household nowadays. And when you come to see this particular piece between the music, between the storyline, you're going to leave with something. I guarantee you that anybody that comes to see this play, you're going to want to do something with your family other than just be on the computer and the iPad and the phone and all this old electronic stuff. And tell me, what is it that families can expect to take away from this particular play? What can we, what's the jewel? What do we take away? The jewel is 
the connection mm -hmm. that we all have as, as a people, mm -hmm. uh, as a family. Because in all actuality, we all family. Mm -hmm. uh, we can keep it real. Yeah, the young people say keep it real. Yes, we can sir. keep it real. Yes, sir. In all actuality, we all are family. And this particular piece is going to show you how to connect those dots. Mm -hmm. So the jewel is is the connection that we all have when it comes to our love, understanding, patience. And that's just, you know, uh, that's just a blessing from God. You know, we all have that oneness with us. We Sometimes we just got to figure out where it is. Yes, sir. But when we figure out where it is, we, we got hold of it. And it feels good, don't we? And we need the elders to show us how to get that connection. Yeah, we're going to get you there. <laughs> Absolutely. If you're going to listen. Yes, sir. We'll listen. Yeah, if you listen, we're going to get you where you need to get to. Absolutely. You know what you do. So let me just say this in our closing. Houston, you have never seen, you have never partaken of a particular play that will bless your life, your soul. A Soulful Christmas is so much more about music and culture. It sounds like something that's healing, and I believe that's exactly what it is. It's something that's going to heal us as a family, as a culture, as a people. We're going through a lot in society right now. We need to have this kind of reminder of what, what's really important. So I thank uh, Mr. Pop Pop yeah. for taking his time out this afternoon afternoon to speak with us. The pleasure was mine. Houston, you don't want to miss this production. I'm telling you, you need to bring your family, bring your co-workers. This is a generational approach to love, to culture, to music, and you won't find it anywhere else but here at the Ensemble Theater yeah. at A Soul for Christmas. I will see you there. Me too. Welcome back to our segment, Houston. This is Charity Smith again, Miss Mogul, at the Ensemble Theater, at the uh, previews for A Soulful Christmas. We have actually snagged a treasure on tonight. It is my pleasure to sit down and speak with Miss Caitlin Kennerson, who is a member of the female ensemble at the Ensemble Theater. Uh, we're actually speaking with her tonight regarding A Soulful Christmas. So without further ado, welcome Miss Caitlin. Hi. <laughs> to the viewing audience. I'm so glad to sit down and speak with you. Well, thank you. Tell me a little bit about your role here tonight at the Ensemble. We're here tonight for the preview. Uh, the rehearsal prior to the previews. Yes. So give me a little bit about what that process is all about for you in the ensemble and how you actually got started with the ensemble. Wow. Um, I auditioned last year mm -hmm. and I uh, was casted last year as an understudy mm -hmm. and I worked really hard and here I am a part of the female ensemble this time. Um, I have a lead song. Mm -hmm. I'll be singing Oh Santa. Mariah Carey's Oh Santa. Oh, wait, that, that's iconic. Because for her <laughs> to be able to pull off that song, that speaks to me about the quality of your voice. That speaks to me about range. <laughs> no, that's serious. So if you're going to pull off my, and I'm going to have to ask you for a tidbit of that at the end, but I, I won't put you on the spot. Yes. You got to give us a little bit. I can. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's not wait on that. Can you give us a little bit? Yes. Yes, go ahead. I saw them shopping last week. And his new girl was so bleak And then I swore to myself Santa's gonna come and make you mine This Christmas night Shut up! <laughs> yes! Now honey, I see why you're no longer the understudy But you're in the ensemble Your voice is rich, it's beautiful Thank you, Houston, thank you Houston, we need to see Do you have, before we get uh, to more of the ensemble Do you have any products or any songs or any recordings out that we can kind of find you and keep track of you. I am on, you can follow me on Facebook, Caitlin K, and I post all the shows that I do yes. on Facebook mostly. Um, I haven't recorded any songs yet, but I'm just, might. I predict, <laughs> I predict that we will not only hear you on Broadway, but I'm I'm speaking a best uh, Come on, see yes, a number one. I'm speaking a number one song hit for this young lady. There's Thank no you. way a voice like that should be hidden. Thank no you. No way. No way. So all of you folks out there who are in the industry, look up Miss Caitlin. I'm just putting her out there. I'm just saying. You know, when Thank I find you. this stuff, I'm like Oprah. I share it when I find something wonderful. And honey, your voice is wonderful. Oh, God bless you. Thank You're you. You're wonderful. Now, tell me a little bit about, again, what the ensemble, the female ensemble role is here within A Soulful Christmas with the musical. Um, well, we we dance. There's a lot of dancing mm -hmm. going on here. And you, you'll get a chance to see that. Mm -hmm. um, and singing. And... 
Um, we are, we call it Pedronomics and Carltonology, mm. the wow. di musical director yeah, and the, yeah. di the choreographer and director, because to be able to, to do all these things at one time, I mean, they really put it in there and they the faith that they have in us is amazing so and they really do pull out the best oh they pull the out artists. the best i didn't it was things i didn't know i could do yeah that i learned through them and i'm i'm so grateful that i got a chance to do it but that's how you know you're in the midst of greatness yes because for you to say i didn't know i was capable of that and then you pull it out oh, and then yeah. you see it on display yeah. it's a beautiful thing it now is. before we go tell me why is it important that you're associated with a soulful christmas why is it important to you why is this musical important to you well for one Step Stewart did an amazing job with with compiling all of those songs that you want to hear mm -hmm. throughout the holiday. I mean, I my favorite one is Give Love on Christmas mm. Day. I mean, and Trenton does a wonderful job mm -hmm. in performing that song. And it gets you in the holiday spirit. It, it gets you ready for Coco and, mm -hmm. and for family and, and, and friends and good food and laughter and... and those are the things that are that are most important around the holiday seasons, and he did a wonderful job in in displaying all of that mm -hmm. in this musical, and also just to be a part of a, a black theater. I mean, to be amongst it's peers that oh yeah, to be amongst peers that that appreciate the history that the way that I do, mm -hmm. um, it's just it's amazing. It's a blessing. There there are no words to describe how I feel when I'm with them. It's amazing. Uh, I see the emotion coming up, and it's a beautiful thing. So, Houston, we have more than one reason to see a soulful Christmas. Not only is it a beautiful production, not only are there talented actors and dancers, but I'm telling you, Houston, you need to get connected to Miss Caitlin Kennerson. I'm telling you, Houston is just a hotbed for talent. But when we find exceptional talent, I think we need to support it. And Miss oh, Miss Caitlin, you. I really believe you're exceptional talented. Thank you. Thank you. So without further ado, let's hit the stage and see Miss Caitlin Kennerson rocking it out. <laughs> 